Hello, everybody. Welcome to day five of our five-day series on spirits that the Lord instructed me to speak to you this week. It has been a powerful week as the Lord has unveiled to us the spirit of accusation, the spirit of infirmity, the spirit of heaviness. And then yesterday he unveiled for us the, um, oh, I'm drawing a blank, the spirit of error. That's what it was. The spirit of error was yesterday. And now today we're on day five and we are ready to finish up this five-day series on spirit of jealousy. Yes, today we're going to talk about the spirit of jealousy. I really believe, as I've said to you all week long, that every one of these spirits are like barnacles that are seeking to attach themselves to the body of Christ. Whether you've been had a spirit of accusation attached to you, whether you've had a spirit of of uh, heaviness attached to you or a spirit of infirmity attached to you or the spirit of error attached to you. And guess what? Today you're going to learn what the spirit of jealousy is that seeks to attach itself to you. So this spirit first is identified in the book of Numbers. When's the last time you read the book of Numbers? Probably not recently, <laughs> but the book of Numbers chapter five, and we are going to read verse 14 because that is where we find this verse. Now, this verse is connected to husband and wife jealousy, but we have to launch off of Numbers chapter 5 in order to get the understanding of the spirit of jealousy as we move forward into more revelation about this spirit that God is trying to reveal to us. So let me start reading for you. I'm in the New American Standard Bible, Numbers chapter 5, verse 14. It says, if a spirit of jealousy comes over him, meaning a husband, and he is jealous of his wife when she has defiled herself. Or if a spirit of jealousy comes over him and he is jealous of his wife when she has not defiled herself. And it goes on to explain that if a spirit of jealousy comes over a husband and he has a thought that his wife has maybe committed adultery and the spirit of jealousy comes over him. I love the way the Young Living Translation says it. It says that if a spirit of jealousy passes over him, if a spirit of jealousy comes upon him, can you imagine that? A spirit of jealousy, it's more clear than it's ever been before about these spirits, that these spirits are atmospheric airwave spirits that are floating in the air and they're coming over you and they're trying to destroy your life and they're trying to find a place to land in your life so that they can weaken you, so that they can eventually destroy your relationships, destroy your health, destroy um, your internal soul, destroy your strength, destroy your reputation, whatever it may be. Every one of these spirits that we have learned is rooted in Satan himself and that's why they are a spirit that seeks to destroy and to weaken you. And today it says if a spirit of jealousy comes over him, that means the spirit of jealousy is coming from outside of him. This is the clearest understanding of what I've been trying to tell you all week, that these spirits are coming from outside of us, attaching themselves to us. They're not a spirit that you are possessed by. And so it says if a spirit of jealousy comes over him, and it says it, it, says it twice, if a spirit of jealousy comes over him, but I want to expand it out that the spirit of jealousy that comes over you doesn't necessarily only have to do with husband and wife, doesn't only have to do with boyfriend and girlfriend, but it actually has to do with a major issue in the body of Christ. There is a spirit of jealousy in the body of Christ that is, is almost so palatable that all it takes is you being around Christians to realize that Christians are extremely jealous of one another. Why? Well, I'm going to hopefully explain to you why I think that is. But here we need to do a little bit of understanding of what does jealousy mean. So I looked up in the Strong's Concordance, what is the definition of jealousy? And this is what it says. Jealousy is envy. It is anger. It is an emotion greater than a person's wrath or anger. Jealousy is like the supreme 
emotion that's even greater than anger, greater than wrath. It is jealousy. And it's a violent spirit. It, 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 it's, a, it's a violent spirit that, that seeks to violently destroy you, seeks to violently pull you down so that you do not rise. And it's a spirit of jealousy. But here's the reality of jealousy that I want to share with you. Jealousy is a little bit different than envy. And I want to read to you what dictionary, um, is it dictionary.com? Anyway, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's dictionary.com. It says envy versus jealousy. The main difference between envy and jealousy is that envy is the emotion of coveting someone, excuse me, the emotion of coveting what someone else has, while jealousy is the emotion related to the fear that something you have will be taken away by someone else. That is the key. There is a fear attached to jealousy that believes that what you have is going to be taken away by someone else. So jealousy is a possessive spirit. Jealousy is a territorial spirit. It is a spirit that seeks to, to be territorial in nature. It, it, another name for it, it's a mafia spirit. You say, how can you call it a mafia spirit? Because if you understood the definition of mafia, which I'm going to read for you right now, you might understand what I mean. And you may have encountered it and didn't even realize it. Um, the definition of a mafia is a closed group of people in a particular field having a controlling influence. A closed group of people in a particular field having a controlling influence. You remember the, the man in the Gadarenes in Mark chapter 5? And he was um, cutting himself with rocks and he was living in the tombs and they tried to chain him up and he would break the chains. And Jesus came and he fell on his feet before Jesus and he said, uh, have mercy on us, son of God. We know who you are. And Jesus said, what is your name? And they said, our name is Legion. That is a mafia spirit. It's a mob spirit. And that mafia spirit was territorial because what did they say to Jesus? If you're going to cast us out, do not cast us out of the region. You can find this in Mark chapter 5. Do not cast us out of this region. Why? Because they had a mafia spirit. It was a territorial spirit. So they said, if Jesus said, all right, I'm going to cast you into the pigs. He was letting them stay in the region because... Um, but little did they know that they were going to be drowned in the sea and never to rise again. But this mafia territorial spirit is actually a spirit of jealousy. It fears that there is not enough to go around. So it's rooted in a fear of lack. And it's afraid you're going to take what God gave them. It's a mafia spirit. It gets very protective very territorial, and it gets almost violent. And it's very dangerous. And it is a spirit that comes upon people. It comes upon church people with a vengeance because it, it on its lowest level, it becomes competition. So many believers that I have spoken to are so afraid that somehow they're going to miss out on what God is doing. And so therefore they self-promote, they self-market, they self-establish. They do everything out of self. And here's what Bill Johnson says. Bill Johnson says anything that you start with self, you have to maintain with self, and it is exhausting. But anything that the Spirit of God starts, the Spirit of God maintains, and it's liberating. Here's how the Lord spoke to me. I was working as a senior pastor in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. My husband and I um, started a church there. And I was standing behind the sound booth running the sound system. And my husband was preaching and the Lord spoke to me and he said to me, he said, Lisa, he said, if you want man to lift you up, man will bring you down. But if you let me lift you up, no one will be able to bring you down. And I knew right then and there that I never had to live in fear that I was not going to get my chance to be a public communicator of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I had no idea. This was like eight years ago when God spoke this to me, and I will never forget it. 
because so many people have tried to promote me, try to self-market me, try to do all this stuff for me. And I'm like, no, 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 no. God will know the timing for my rising. And once I rise, I will keep rising because that's what God has for me. Not because I'm doing it for myself. But if you look in the Christian world, you find people stealing other people's prophetic words just so that they can have a national voice. You watch people that are living in fear that there's not enough people that need to hear the gospel, so they got to split churches, they got to steal other people's um, sheep from their church in order to start their own church because there's this fear of lack. They're territorial. There's, it's rooted in destructive behavior. This spirit of jealousy is demonic. And it comes upon believers, doesn't possess you, but it comes upon you and it seeks to destroy you because then you exhaust yourself trying to, can I use the words, keep up with the Joneses, try to have the latest prophetic word, try to have the most important revelation, try to have the biggest ministry. And it just becomes this, this nasty, angry, wrathful, jealous game of who has the biggest, who has the best, who has the most. Who has the most relevant? Who has this? Who has that? And it's just nauseating because the spirit of jealousy is demonic in nature and it's destructive by design. Here's what Proverbs chapter 27 verse 4 says. Wrath is cruel and anger a torrent, but who is able to stand before jealousy? Ladies and gentlemen, we have got to scrape this barnacle off our life. We have got to get this spirit of jealousy off of our life because it is rampant. There's such a belief that somebody else is going to get to do something and our dream is not going to be fulfilled. That somebody else is going to be the first one to release that prophetic word and nobody will listen to my voice. Can I read you something out of James chapter 3 verses 14 and 16? It says that envy and self-seeking are wonder twin powers. Wherever you find envy... You're going to find self-seeking. And what this is saying is, is that jealousy is a selfish spirit. It's a spirit that believes that there's not enough to go around. It's a territorial mafia type spirit that has to remain in control out of fear of losing something. And I would just propose to you that this spirit is destroying the body of Christ. You have denominations that have this spirit attached to it. You have churches that have this spirit attached to it. You have individual believers that have this spirit attached to it. And I'm telling you, this is not the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is trying to rid us of all of these spirits because they will not work in the kingdom. If you are a kingdom builder, you're not in competition with anybody. You're not trying to self-promote or self-market. You're speaking whatever God said for you to speak, whether he says like he's told me these five days. God has never told me to do this before. I have never blitzed YouTube or Facebook or any other media platform with multiple messages like this. This is not, I, I have never done this. And the Lord is saying that that he wants to deal with the spirit of jealousy. And here's how he does it. You want to know the cure to the spirit of jealousy? Which is a spirit of envy, which is anger, which is wrath, which is destructive. You want to know what the answer is? It's a twofold answer and it's one and the same thing. It's love and generosity. 1 Corinthians 13.4 says love is not envious. Love does not envy. Love is not jealous is what another translation says. Real love is not jealous. And what does the Bible say? If you have not love, you are nothing. Therefore, the cure, and let me tell you this also, the Bible also says that perfect love casts out all fear. If you Know that you are loved by God Almighty and by the people around you. You will have no fear of missing out on what God has created you for. And here's the second part, generosity. And this is critical as well. And I want to read you this verse out of, oh, I wrote the solution on the back. 
I want to read you this verse out of Proverbs 11:24. It says, one gives freely and becomes more wealthy. Be stingy and lose everything. Did you know that generosity breaks the spirit of poverty? Br generosity breaks lack. Generosity with what? With your money, because you're not afraid of running out. You're not jealous or envious that somebody has more than you. There is more than enough to go around. But remember, the narrative of the airwaves is that we've got to put regulations on everything because there's not enough water. There's not enough wind. There's not enough heat. There's too much heat. There's too much cold. There's not enough money. There's not enough health care. There's not enough food. There's not enough. There's not enough. There's not enough. Of course there's enough. There's more than enough. There is more than enough. The Bible says, David said this, I was young and now I am old and I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. You never have to fear that you're going to run out. You never have to fear that you're going to go without because God is able to get you what you need when you need it and how he wants to do it. Do you understand that the kingdom of God is not the governments of earth? You are not to look to the government of earth to meet your needs. You are to look to the kingdom of God. Matthew 6, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. Seek him and he gives it to you. He's got you covered. You're talking to somebody that for five years has lived by speaking forth the word of God in truth and in power and decreeing and declaring, God, this is what I need. This is what I need right now. You told me to seek you not to work a traditional job and you'll provide for me. I've never begged bread, obviously. <laughs> I've never asked anybody for money. I've never done a GoFundMe account. I've never done a fundraiser campaign. I've, I've said, you know what, if you're blessed by what God is doing through me and you want to help support this ministry, we would love for you to do that. But I have never not done what God told me to do. And he has always provided every step of the way. Do I have an, a surplus in the bank? Absolutely not. You would be stupefied if you knew how close to the edge I lived financially. But God is faithful because he said, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He declares rest for my soul. I have no fear of lack because the Lord is my shepherd. I'm not jealous of others that get promotions. I actually go into different regions and cities and unlock the spiritual atmosphere so that wealth can get into the hands of people that I know and love and people that have asked me to come in. I do it. I don't charge them to do it. They get a breakthrough whether they remember me or don't remember me. Like I said, my job is to do what God told me to do. He is the rewarder, not man. Yes, he will use man as he puts it upon man's heart and women's heart to sow into my life. But I'm not afraid of running out because man, government, none of these people are my source. I'm not jealous of their prosperity. I'm not jealous of their marriage. I'm not jealous of the house they live in. I'm not worried about the car they drive. I'm not concerned that they have a bigger ministry. I'm not concerned that they have a microphone and I don't. I'm not worried about these things because God said, when I lift you up, no one will bring you down. You see, if God does the lifting, God does the lifting. God knows when it's time for you to be in ministry. God knows when it's time for you to be married. God knows when it's time for you to have money. God knows. He made you. He knows exactly what you need, when you need it, how to give it to you. And guess what? It's all about him getting glory out of you. He says it's to the glory of God to conceal the matter. It's to the glory of kings to search it out. I believe there are people that have been concealed for such a time as this so that God can get all kinds of glory. But you have got to scrape the spirit of jealousy off your life, thinking somehow you're going to miss out on something. That somehow God likes them better than you. The Bible says that God has, he shows no favoritism. He doesn't like certain people better than others. He doesn't think you're more beautiful than that person. He, there's so much variety in the world. The spirit of competition and jealousy and envy, it's just got to come off of the body of Christ. 
We are a body. We have one head. His name is Jesus the Christ. The rest of us are either the left arm, the right arm, the left hand, the right hand, the left um, lung, the right lung, the kidney, the heart, the leg, the foot, the toe, you name it. Every one of us is a part of everything below the head. He alone is the head of this body. There is no other head. Sorry. He alone is the head. And as we submit to him, he takes care of everything, you guys. You don't need a godfather. You don't need some man that's going to call you into ministry to help you. You don't need some network that's going to promote you. You need God. I need God. And guess what? There's plenty of resources and there's plenty of people and there's plenty of ministry opportunity. And when he wants to create a place for you, he will do it. He will do it. You just do what he tells you to do and let him do what he needs to do for you. You don't have to be jealous. You don't have to be worried that you're going to get left behind. You don't have to be afraid that you're going to run out. The spirit of jealousy is absolutely destructive and demonic in nature. And God himself is setting his people free from these five spirits that have sought to destroy us, weaken us, cripple us, and cause conflict amongst us in the body of Christ. But I'm telling you, he's for us and not against us. I don't have every gift. My gift is no better than yours. I need you and you need me. And if we could just learn to walk together, the kingdom of God would advance on earth as it is in heaven. And we would begin to establish righteousness and eradicate wickedness. But it has to start in the body of Christ. Because we have authority when we speak. So be generous with your words. You know how you break anger? You're grateful. Gratitude is the, is the antidote to anger. Generosity is the antidote to, to jealousy. Gratitude and generosity are the same thing. Because when you're grateful, you speak nice. You speak kind words. You speak grateful words. You find the good in other people. Jealousy, envy, and anger are all self-seeking, selfish spirits that are all about me and all about me, myself, and I. So be generous with your words. Be generous with your time. Be generous with your love. Be generous with your money. Be generous on every occasion, you're never going to run out. I'm not telling you not to be wise. You need to be wise. Pay your bills. Set boundaries around your time. You have a husband. You have a child, children, whatever. I mean, don't just, don't, don't let people control what you do. God never made you to be controlled by another person. The Bible, nowhere in the word of God does it say that any other person has dominion over you. It says that we have dominion over the resources of the earth. Mothers and fathers have dominion over their children in order to train them. But everybody else? No, we're all partners in ministry. We have one head. It is Jesus the Christ. So I hope you're encouraged. God's trying to liberate his people. Remember Luke chapter 4. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news. To the poor, to the setting free of the captive, liberty, um, uh, for those that are in prison, sight for the blind, ears for the deaf. I mean, come on, he's come to set you free. And it is for freedom that he has set you free. So be encouraged. He's breaking off the spirit of accusation. He's breaking off the spirit of infirmity. He's breaking off the spirit of heaviness. He's breaking off the spirit of error. And he's breaking off the spirit of jealousy. Because he wants his kingdom people to be free and to live in wide open spaces that are holy places. Be encouraged. God is for you and not against you. I hope you enjoyed this series. If you like it and you want to share it with your friends, go ahead. If you want to give to the Apostolic Resource Center, you can go to www.apostolicresourcecenter.org and you can click the donate button. We're a 501c3 nonprofit organization and we are honored to be able to serve you. Thank you for giving me these past five days. I have thoroughly enjoyed and sharing with you what God has shared with me because the Bible says freely you have received, freely give. And so that is my goal is to freely give you truth that will set you free. All right. Have a great day. Thanks again for listening. 
May the Lord bless you and may he keep you and make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you and show you immense amounts of favor. Until we meet again, amen and amen.